going on, everybody? Zach Rosenblatt here with Mike Kay. We're in Landover, Maryland. I don't even know where we are. This area is kind of confusing. Hyattsville, I don't know, whatever. I, don't, I never know where I am around here. They say they're D.C. I don't really know where we are. But we know where the Eagles are. They're going into the playoffs right now. Uh, I mean, I have to go ahead and say I was wrong. I mean, I... I you were. I, I've, I've, there, between that and the Sproles thing, I was wrong. I've been right about a lot of things. I've been wrong about a couple of things. This and the Sproles thing were the two big ones. Uh, I was pretty adamant. I didn't think they had a chance. Uh, they didn't really give them any reason to think they would have a chance. And then Nick Foles, of course, comes in as the hero. They destroyed the Redskins. Like, the, the score doesn't even do justice how badly they beat them. They won 24-0. to They held them below 100 total yards. Adrian Peterson had more on one rush the last time they played than they gave up tonight. And, you know, it was one of those things. Like, they didn't control their own destiny, as we said. And they're, it, it all worked out. The Vikings have Kirk Cousins, so they lost to the Bears. And now the Eagle, the Bears helped the Eagles, and now the Eagles are going to play the Bears on Sunday. And, and it's going to be a fun game. Yeah, I mean, this, is a, this was a game that, they, it was vital, you know, they had to come out big, and they came out big in all three phases, I thought special teams played well, defense played well, offense played well, we talked about it on the podcast, for the pre- the preview podcast, we said that running the ball was the way to win this game, keep the ball out of the Redskins' hands, there was no n- reason for them to ever have any dr- sustained drives for a really long time, but 34, the Eagles did. four carries, yeah. You know, the Eagles kept the ball on the ground, they didn't just run the ball to keep the ball on the ground they used a lot of screens you saw Nick Foles complete yeah. 25 consecutive passes a lot of that was on his Tied an his, NFL record another he's in the dude we'll talk about him but he's in the record books again <laughs> he'll get his own five minutes of fame in the yeah, show right? I'm sure but uh Maybe. you know Maybe. the the dump offs and everything like that I thought Doug Peterson called the phenomenal game I thought Jim Schwartz called a great game as well this is a team that when they are cooking I, I mean, if you're in the playoffs, I don't know who, who wants to play this team. It, you know, the we talked about the Bears and the Bears helping them get into the playoffs. They might have sealed their own fate because I do think this Eagles team is going to be a really tough matchup for them, especially with them dealing with injuries to Eddie Jackson and Allen Robinson. Those are their two key players on both sides of the ball this season from a playmaking standpoint. Obviously, taking away Khalil Mack and Mitch Trubisky, but man... Uh, this team is on a roll. Their first three game winning streak of the, of the season, we you can't forget that. It was their first like truly like all phases, all four quarters dominant performance of the season, and it happened to come right before the playoffs. Right. I know the Redskins didn't have anything to play for, and they're not very good, so you have to like take some of it with a grain of salt. But it's just like in a continuation of what we saw the last two weeks. Yeah, I think this team plays at its best when their backs are against the wall, and they've a lot of this team was constructed last year, not this season, but last season, and there's a lot of guys that have that Super Bowl experience, that playoff experience. There are guys that have stepped up. Young guys that were in their first or second year last year have matured. You know, the Rasul Douglases, the... Wendell Smallwood. The Camus Gruget Hills. Like, the, the guys like that, that... Jake Elliott. There are guys that are stepping up and growing, and you're seeing that from the injury adversity, too. Crevon LeBlanc, uh, you know... <laughs> We, Avante Maddox, like there are so many young guys that are stepping up on this team that you can feel like maybe they, maybe they're one and done in the playoffs, or maybe they 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 win two uh, playoff game and then they're out, whatever. Maybe they don't repeat. You can feel good that this team can be a contender for a while because you're seeing guys step up. It's almost like the cornerbacks are better than the starters were to start the season. Rasul Douglas is playing at a very high level. Avante Maddox is an absolute stud. You'd forget his side of the field even exists in, at times in games. Um, Corey Graham's even played very well over the last three games. You know, it, I think this team is finding its rhythm. And what I think is cool is Jordan Hicks. Jason Peters, Darren Sproles, those three guys really didn't get to experience the, the the joys of that playoff run, and now they get another shot at it. They came back for a, I mean, Sproles and, and Peters in particular came back for a particular reason, and I talked to Wendell Smallwood uh, dur- following the game, and he said, I told Sproles I didn't want this to be it for him. These guys played for these older dudes as well. 
Yeah, and, you know, you talked about, you know, maybe they don't win a game in the playoffs. Maybe they're one and done. You feel better. Like, the, we talked a lot about how the guys in, in the seams weren't playing up to par for most of the season. And th- those are the guys they needed to step up for us to feel good about their future going forward. Because, mm-hmm. you know, Carson Wentz is about to get a huge contract. Uh, I mean, that's going to be a discussion we're going to talk about maybe a little today, but mostly in the off season. But that's looming. So they're, and they already don't have a lot of cap space like at all. So they can't really afford to add many guys. It's just going to be like you know veteran short term contracts, and it's going to be rookies. And they have to get they have to get some right. And they're getting a lot of guys right. They they stumbled on LeBlanc. The Lions cut him in the middle of the season. Like it's pretty rare for a guy to come in in the middle of the season after being waived by somebody else and to come in and like establish himself. Like Jim Schwartz went out of his way to talk about him this week. And you talked about Rizul Douglas. You know they weren't even playing him for what week was it when he finally started playing? Once right. Jalen Mills and Darby were both. Out. Yeah, like, it was when like he first started getting like full snaps. He went from zero to like 100. seventy snaps real quick. <laughs> yeah, he um, Russell Douglas, I think to me is kind of in in is what's so special about this team is guys that you would never expect to really kind of make that jump. Not only make or, the or guys that weren't given the opportunity, and then where they capitalized. Yeah, right. Like guys take advantage of their opportunities in this in this Trey Sullivan. Trey Sullivan's had some pretty decent games as of late as a support safety. Um, Camus playing pretty well. Yeah. Uh, you know, Tra- uh, Trevon Hester. Guys are becoming role. What I like about this team is it's not. There's not a lot of superstars. There's well, there is a lot of superstars, but they have like a lot of those like low key guys. Also, I, I think it depends on what your definition. I think they have a lot of really good players. Like players. They have three superstars on this team. They have Fletcher Cox. They have Carson Wentz. I mean, that's a lot. And of superstars. and uh, Lane Johnson. And Zach Ertz. The, yeah, oh, Zach Ertz. Okay, so they have four, okay? I don't know if that's a lot of superstars, but I, but my point is is you have a bunch of guys that are contributing. And and a lot of teams, you don't get, like, those 43 guys that are helping out. They, this is a team... They have a full roster. They have a... Correct. Yeah, that's what you're trying to... I get what you're saying. Yes. You know, if they were an NBA team, they use all 12 guys on I mean, they're not top-heavy. Like, a lot of teams would have those four guys, and they would... Everything would kind of be on their shoulders. Clearly, it's not, because Carson Wentz isn't even in the lineup. And, and, again, it's like last year. Nick Foles has been amazing, like, don't get me wrong, but it's the guys around him have been stepping up. Like, he says that. Co- Doug Peterson says that. And it's the truth. Like... Everything that was one of the biggest problems this season was none, the three phases were never working at the same time. You would have a half where the defense would shut them down, and then they would fade in the second half. Or the offense would do great in one half, the defense wouldn't. The special teams would have some fumbles. Like it, the, these last three weeks, uh, all three phases have just been working together the entire time. And, and and maybe Nick Foles has something to do with it. Maybe it's just Doug Peterson, you know, cracking down the playbook or making the right message. Or maybe everything just coalesced at the at the right time. And that latter part, I mean, you, if you're ever going to have momentum, you want it to be at the end of the season. Oh, for <laughs> Much sure. Better than the beginning of the season. <laughs> like, well, you know what I find interesting is here. I think it's it's partially due to Nick Foles, but not because of Nick Foles. I think this team's so sick of being counted out. Every single time, like, their starting quarterback goes down. They're more than just their starting quarterback. And I'm not saying motivation completely compels them to to be this dominant force. But what I think is interesting is that this team steps up, again, when their backs are against the wall. Nick Foles can play a good game. I actually thought this was his worst game of the three of the so, three, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and within that, he had 25 completions in a row. So, right. I mean, I mean they, were, they were doing a lot of short passes. Like, it was designed for something like that to happen. But, I mean, he was completing the passes. His connection with Alshon Jeffrey is unreal. He had, he had a bad interception early, and he had, like, a bad pass attempt for maybe it was Darren Sproles or something like that on, like, a screen. I can't think of another bad play he, he had. Yeah, he – so the one that would have been the 26th completion from where we were sitting yeah, initially, we angle, yeah. it looked – it, and if you've never seen, if you've never s- sat in the press box or whatever, it, it's basically like we we're sitting in the end zone. Yeah, and and we're at mid range. So we can only see like when they're at the far side of the field. It's hard for us like understand. So Aguilar, it looked like Aguilar just like kind of tried to lack of effort one was it just one handed thrown or something. Yeah, it was way okay. behind him. Way behind. I will him. say he had Golden Tate had one of the worst drops they've had. This, yeah, Golden this Tate uh, made a made a. So <laughs> I want to say we're not, we're not gonna we're not gonna dwell on this game too much because you know by the time everybody listens to this, it's really the game's not even the most important thing that come out of the day. It's how they're feeling going into the playoffs. But we we'll, let, let's just run through a few things that stood out. So 
give me give me three guys that stood out to you. Go one. By Rasul one. Douglas, that opening interception set the tone. It's the first play from scrimmage in the game. He tracked this ball so well. Uh, Josh Johnson just kind of – the ball f- kind of fluttered. and, and was, that, was that the first play of the game? Yeah, it okay. was the first wow. play of the game. Uh, and, you know, it set the Eagles up to have some momentum. They didn't really get to do much with it. But, again – you start fast in one phase, the other phases will follow, and I thought that was a big, big, a big moment. Um, so, so he's he's going to end the season as the leader in interceptions. Three, like, three interceptions. I mean, yeah. how, who would have predicted that Rizul Douglas would be the guy leading this team in interceptions? All the suit is ma- it does. It, he just makes plays. Like it's yeah. like, what do you want from me? Um, what do you want from me? <laughs> yeah, what do you want from me? Uh, two. So my number two guy. Yeah, let's, let's go back and forth. I'll, I'll say one. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll go. I'll Sean Jeffrey. So, oh, okay. So he, he he had five catches, five targets, fifty nine yards, and a touchdown. He had one of these one of those signature all on Jeffrey catches on the sideline from Foles, where he he kind of, he reeled it in and kept his feet in bounds. Like he's he's one of the five best receivers in the NFL in terms of Foles throwing it up, him getting it, and him keeping it in bounds. Uh, the touchdown was a really good play, and he's just a presence. There's just a presence about him when he, especially when he plays with Foles, where you think if Foles is throwing it up to him, he's gonna go and get it. Yeah, and I'll add to that. Not people look at him as a jump ball guy. He was actually beating Josh yeah. Norman regularly, and in he's coverage. really good after the catch, which is also something that's not talk- like a lot of the times his catches are at the sideline. But when they throw it to him in the middle of the field, like he gets up there. So my other guy would be my second guy would be Wendell Smallwood. Yeah. What do we always talk about when no one expects anything? Yeah. This guy, he delivers. He was looking like Brian Westbrook out there at at some points. Now, he's, um, he's he's going to be on this roster next year. Yeah, and you know what? He's a guy that I think a lot of people in that locker room admire. He constantly keeps a good attitude. He's always smiling. He he, he wants perspective too when you talk to him. Like he like yeah. he understands when he struggles. He's open about like how hard it is sometimes when they don't give him the touches. Yeah, I mean, he's a guy that's overcome a lot. He finished with uh, 77 total yards. If I would have told you that before this game, I'd have been like, wow, man, they're resting their starters in the second half. <laughs> uh, who you got for your number two? Uh, I mean, he was the most dominant player in this game, Fletcher Cox. Whew. Three sacks, he got to 10 and a half. First time he's had double digits. I know that was special to him. He had three quarterback hits. Like, there are some games where you look at the box score and he's not as mentioned as much because he does so much. Like, he does way more than the box score would even possibly show. And he had three sacks in this game, and I still don't even know if that does justice for, like, how good he was. He, I know the Redskins offensive line is the most injured position unit in the NFL, probably. The Eagles secondary, maybe second place. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, uh, I mean, Fletcher Cox, man, he's a, he's a, deserved to be an all-pro. I know it's a tough year for D-tackles because Aaron Donald's been amazing, and, you know, that the dude on the Chiefs has been really good. Chris Jones, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, Fletcher Cox, is he's the second best defensive tackle in the NFL. So I hate to stick with with uh, offense and not reward. The, well, I, I guess I went with I, Strill I Douglas, the first good. one. Uh, Nelson Aguilar. Nelson Aguilar, I've, I've gotten a lot of people in my mentions saying, hey, he's not going to be back. I don't know he's, about that. He's coming back. He's coming back. So it's a big contract, but let me let me give you two. Let me give you this, okay? Give me last it. year, sixty-two catches, seven hundred and sixty-eight yards, eight touchdowns. This year, sixty-four catches, seven hundred and thirty-six yards, four touchdowns. So it's less touchdowns. So it's less touchdowns. A little bit less yard. It's thirty less yard. Thirty less yards or whatever. <laughs> um. That's why I got into journalism, I, you know. Anyway. Or whatever. Look, the guy's a good number two wide receiver. That's what he is. And that's fine. Like, I, I mean. He's you're, better than Golden Tate. Yeah, and you're going to bulk against like $9 million a year. Sweetie pie, that's that's what How people make. How much money make. did uh, Quincy Nunwa just make on his new deal? Uh, around like eight, eight and a half. A year. And yeah, Nelson like, Aguilar's, I, I like Anunua, actually. But, oh, I love Anunua. Aguilar is a better player than him. He's look, more dynamic, at least. Anyway. <laughs> look, here's what I think happened. This is my logic. I'm not. This isn't a report. This is my logic. They traded for Golden Tate, trying to figure out which one they wanted to keep long term. If Aguilar didn't step up, then you cut him and you, you try to re-sign Golden Tate with that that fifth year option money. Nelson Aguilar has not only played well as a receiver, he's improved as a blocker. He's a very good decoy. They like to use him on end arounds. He's very versatile. Team first guy. I've never heard the guy complain this season since we've co- been you and I have been covering the team. 
he he's a guy that can be a really good number two wide receiver, and that's worth spending a first round pick on. That's worth spending your fifth year option on. If you can have a really good number two wide receiver when you have a talent like Alshon Jeffrey and you have a tight end like Zach Ertz, and you and have Goddard, this, yeah. and you have a guy named da- Dallas Goddard who would have been my fourth guy in this in this whole thing. He's good. This offense is weapons, dude, and when you use them properly, you know, as the manufacturer puts out. You you can play really well. You if you're Carson Wentz, you love the weapons you have. I mean, think about how he wasn't being targeted very much. I know some of that has to do with the receiver, but he had two touchdowns. But, right? Yeah, I mean, he wasn't being targeted much for a long stretch of the season there. And uh, you mentioned Golden Tate. I I, I think they thought they were getting I, I don't know if they realized what kind of player they were getting. I think he's a little more limited in what he can do in his role than maybe they realized. I think they probably they thought they could move him around and get creative with him and I don't think they've been able to do that and you know the idea the, the idea of that trade was good in theory but I think we can say that it was a failure now that the regular season's over. So so I wanted to bring that up. When Howie made the trade and a lot of us weren't around because it's the bye week and yeah. people were traveling I was in Paris. Right, you were in Paris, and so I'm at this press conference, and how he's grinning from ear to ear, and the whole thing was about, hey, we want to take advantage of where our positioning is, and we want to make the playoffs. Maybe he said that they want to win the division. He said something about putting your foot on the gas or something. Right, right, right. They did make the playoffs, so... Not because of the trade. Not because of the trade, but if you're Howie Roseman... He can be technical about it. Yeah, if he really wanted his out. <laughs> well, there, there's his guys, out. Guys, guys, Look, Look at what I said. Look at the transcript. Right. Uh, look, the trade was not worth it. That said, though, I don't think they were very... They they had high hopes on re-signing him and, and keeping yeah. Aguilar. So... I would rather keep Aguilar f- for the next decade than have. I mean, Tate is the way the free agent market's looking at receiver. Tate's going to make some money. Yeah, he's going to make some money, even though he, whatever this season. I mean, he's the like I don't have the names in front of me, but he's the best receiver on the market, which says a lot about the market. And Field, you want to hear something interesting? Field Yates linked him to the Washington Redskins. Yeah, he like predicted a bunch of people. Well, he had his best game well, with Redskins the Eagles have no receivers, some, so yeah. <laughs> makes sense. So my last guy. Uh, you know, I'll stick on defense. Let's say Michael Bennett. He, oh, he was good. So I, I just a little while ago, I just tweeted out a photo of him. For, every time he gets a sack, he does like a little dance. I, I'm just like such a huge fan of this dude. I, I know, since you are. Go. I know. He's uh, your Cam Johnston. <laughs> oh, no comment. But uh, I mean, he's just so good, man. He finished the season with nine sacks. They traded a fifth round pick for him. Like he's been so good. Like a lot of them have come in the second half of the season, and him and Fletcher Cox are. By the numbers, the best pass rushing duo in the NFL. Him, him, and Clint, like DT and D end, and I mean he's been a leader on this team. It's in his first year. He's the kind of guy that they got last year with like guys like Legarrette Blunt and Chris Long. Except he's better than them at football. I, I mean, yeah. I, I, I mean, he's 33 years old. Like he doesn't seem like he's slow. It, it went from halfway through the season. We probably were like, you know, maybe he retires. Maybe they cut him because if you cut him, you save seven million without any dead cap hit. Now it's like, I wonder if he's going to want a, a bigger salary. And if that, like that's the thing that prevents them from keeping because he he he's earned it. He he's worth more than seven million dollars. Yeah, I mean that turned out to be a Steel. terrific. Yeah. How so like, we've, we've been critical of Howie's offseason. That was a home run. How he deserves credit. How he's made. How he made two pretty incredible trades this offseason. Michael Bennett's number one, and then the number two would be trading back yeah, the yeah, first yeah. round pick, which I wrote about this weekend. Totally. Uh, getting trade. Set you up to get Dallas Goddard, set you up to get, in my opinion, the story of the year, Vontae Maddox, and you still have a second round pick next year, which is why you were able to trade for Golden Tate. Yeah. I mean, that that's kind of like, it's like those steps that led to last season. If you look at all the trades... They did leading up to these, and that led to like the fourth round pick they could get for JJ and like that. That's the thing. Howard, such Howie is such a good forward thinker, and it's so easy to like get trapped in like evaluating what he, what happens right now with his with the stuff he does because his free agent signing he had a bad free agent signing off season. Like that's just three. Hours. Yeah, and I, I mean I think I but, think, th- but he also did a lot of low risk. Like n- none of the guys they signed are going to ruin your team if they're not good. Right. I, Which is I, what his approach was. And I think when you do that one year, they're going to have to do that again this year. They will. Yeah. They don't there's have, no, they there's no question. Money. But when you do that, it also sets you up to get this. Like, I think people look at one year as one year, right? 
And that's fine, but you also get to figure out if you can take somebody who should probably be a guy that is a rental and if you can get more out of him, right? Because there's something about this coaching staff, and we, we've we been harsh on this coaching staff for a lot of the season. And I think they deserved it for most of it. For, for Yeah. But this coaching staff is also very resilient in how they're able to get stuff out of guys. You might not be seeing, like, Shandon Sullivan balling, but, like... He wouldn't be balling on another team either. Like, does that make sense? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, I think Nate Gary is a borderline NFL talent, and they have him in games, and he's making and, plays. And, he, and he's not making big, even more than him making plays, he's not making huge mistakes that cost Boom. him. Boom. Trey Sullivan, that, a guy. That, that's a sign you know. of coaching. Trey Sullivan would you not know, have a let's shot. Let's talk about one more winner I think we can both agree on. Jim Schwartz. Oh, yeah. Man, he's got the defense playing so well right now. Like, I, I know this is the Redskins. You know, we shouldn't put too much emphasis on this game, I don't think. But they were they held him below 100 yards. Um, I know if you look at the final, like, scores of the, the previous two weeks, they gave up points. But, like, I mean, how many times we can only – I know you and I have both been pretty big on LeBlanc, you especially – like my they, guy. He, he's their nickel cornerback right now, and he has a case to. They have so many corners now. All of a sudden, for next year, I'm not sure they're going to need to add another one. They probably will, just to be safe. Like that's a position you just keep adding, and you know, guys get hurt, blah blah blah. But I mean, all the. I mean, how many ways can we talk about the injuries? Like they've had so many injuries, and they're, they're just playing their best football, probably of the season. Maybe I, they were pretty good in the beginning of the season. To be fair, they, it's kind of underrated how much they were shutting teams down score wise. But like they're going in feeling really good about themselves right now, and they're going to, they're going to be going against an inexperienced quarterback in Mitchell Trubisky. I know it's on the road. It's we'll talk about that game a little bit on this episode. But going against Mitch Trubisky, this defense is ready for him. You know, Drew Brees is another story if they get to the next round. But you feel better about this defense than you have in a long time. Well, in Trubisky's rookie year, they demolished the Bears. Yeah, they won thirty-one to three. Um, here's what I'll say about this, and and. I don't want to get two X's and O's, but having a really good nickel corner can solve a lot of issues. Um, you saw it when Brandon Boykin was here. You saw it when Jose Leo Hansen was here. Not that these guys are Patrick super- Robinson. Patrick Robinson. That can alleviate a lot of concerns, especially in zone coverage. And so I think when – I mean, zone and man for them, I, I don't want to discount either, but like – it's helped this defense because now you have Maddox and Rasul Douglas manning up and those guys play physical. They're also really good tacklers. Crevon LeBlanc is a good tackler for, for a DB that helps you in the run game. It just seems like the last three games, the three of them have played extremely well together and the communications there. And I think we also have to credit Malcolm Jenkins, who has saved this secondary. Um, I mean, think about it. He's the only guy out of the four starters, that was the starter in, in week one, or that anybody would have. If you had said, you guys are make the playoffs with your the, with a certain secondary, pick four players, nobody would have picked the other three. Like, to me, Fletcher Cox is the defensive player of the year for this team, but Malcolm Jenkins is the overall MVP. Like, for, for keep it, holding it together. And, yeah. For this secondary to be, I mean. To be any good, yeah. And coming into this game, he had missed only one play. Do you know how crazy that is? Like, when you consider all the injuries... They, had, they played 99 plays one week and then 70-something the week after and that. And he played every single one of them. Yeah. That is so impressive. He he, he, had, he had a really good year. I mean, he didn't have the interception numbers, whatever. I mean, he was a guy, if you think before the season, he was a guy we were talking about, you know, maybe we'll have to consider cutting him because of his contract. Mm-hmm. They're not cutting that. Yeah, team. there's no way. Well, He's going to retire. He'll stay with the Eagles as long as he wants to. Well, you know what's... He, he, and speaking to Malcolm, he's been a guy that's had to uh, overlook the the Avante Maddox. I mean, Maddox has played incredibly, but he's still a rookie. Corey Graham, who has been put in a really unfortunate spot because he was never supposed to play this much, not even close. And you know, he started nine games. If I would have told you that thirty five year old. Corey Graham was starting nine games, you would have been like, oh, wow, they must have, the entire secondary must have imploded. But you look at next year, and I don't want to look too far ahead because this is, you know, we'll focus on the playoffs, focus on all that stuff. Rasul Douglas is going to be a starter next year. I'm almost positive. 
Jalen Mills is probably going to be a starter because Jim Schwartz is probably still here. And then you have you can have a bunch LeBl- of guys. Yeah, and then you, you can play a different position, right? And then you and then you have this guy Avante Maddox who costs absolutely nothing and he play free and safety. Still have Sidney Jones who has maybe as much talent as anybody there, right? But you if can't, he can ever stay healthy, but I mean the fact that now it's less you're less banking on him, him now, you know. Mm-hmm. So let's let's get into the playoffs and before, one before, before you oh. go, I just want to put a bow on the season as a whole. So I was, I, I was just thinking about it and. It's awesome that they got the playoffs, and, you know, if you had missed the playoffs after winning the Super Bowl, that would have been nothing but a failure. But there's still a part of me that thinks, like, it just took them so long to figure this out. And I think they deserve, they still deserve some criticism for the fact that they're 9-7, and seven, they're the number six team in the playoffs, they barely snuck in, where if they had took- taken care of business a little better in the first half of the year, they either would have won the NFC East, or they'd be they'd even be on the verge of home field advantage or a first round bye. And it's it's really hard to win on the road in the playoffs. It's especially hard to win on the road in Chicago. And then you'd have to go to New Orleans, and then after that it would be LA or Dallas. Like that's I don't know how many teams have done the the three. I know the Giants did. The Ravens did the last time. They like were. that's that's hard, and they're. I'm not saying they can't do it. If there, any team that I, I believe can do it is this one, but they put themselves in position to make it as hard as possible once they're in the playoffs now. Yeah, I mean, it's tough to repeat as a Super Bowl champion, especially when you had the contract situations that you did with the Eagles last year. They lost guys. They knew they were going to lose guys. They tried to, to do something that no other team really did before, but now everybody's trying to do is build around a young quarterback while you still got it. Um I think they can win in Chicago. I just, yeah, New Orleans, to me, I don't think anyone's beating New Orleans in New Orleans. I think, you know what's crazy? Is I think New Orleans is a team that makes it to the Super Bowl riding high, and then they get trounced in Atlanta. Like, in the Super Bowl. Depends on who they're playing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but I, I think a good defense can beat that team away in a neutral site, which you and I argued before we even started the show about neutral sites. Um, so putting a bow on that, what I find interesting now that they're heading into the postseason, they're riding a three game winning streak. They've won, um, five of their last six. Uh, they finished strong. And what I think Interesting is Sidney Jones may be able to come back, maybe. Uh, Isaac Samalu may be able to come back, too, although I thought Wiz played very, very well in this game. Um, we didn't give enough credit to the offensive line. Also, but we'll- also we should briefly talk about Nick Foles. He, uh, he left the game. We didn't mention Nate Sutton. We probably should mention this. He left the game in the fourth quarter. We didn't know what it was. He all of a sudden just was walking in the locker room. Mm-hmm. Of course, everybody started freaking out. Uh, I thought it, I thought it was they, a head injury. It was injury, a chest yeah. injury at first. It wound up being uh, ribs. Ribs. I mean, it didn't. Nobody would say it, but it didn't seem like they were very worried about him. They were. They were. Mm-hmm. They're waiting to get the test like they always do. We'll hear from Doug on Monday. Uh, but I mean, he'll have bruised ribs. It's the second straight week he's got hit pretty hard there. It's not great, but yeah. he's a, he's he's tough as nails. Nate Suffell came in, mostly handed it off, then threw a nice touchdown pass to Nelson Aguilar. They love, they're really high on Nate Sudfeld, and he didn't do anything to disprove that theory. I mean, he didn't do, have to do that much. But the king of Week 17. We're going. We're we're doing this discussion, assuming that Nick Foles is going to play. Yes, Nick Foles said that he wanted to get get ready to roll. He's endeared himself to this fan base, and I think he's kind of endeared himself to like the national fan base as well with stuff like this, where he goes, "I just want to wear the Eagles jersey one more time." Or, or longer. This is a group where there's a lot of guys, and we'll probably get into this a lot more in the offseason. They're going to have their last, the tenured guys are going to have their last game as Eagles at some point in the next month or so. And Nick Foles, Brandon Graham, some of these guys just really want to play for this team. There's such a camaraderie here. When all else was failing and they were four and six and they could have killed each other or yelled or whatever, they stuck together because they like each other. You remember like the Chip Kelly's teams like towards the end? Those were not likable teams. They weren't likable players, likable units. Likeable. Yeah, I mean, like they had likable guys, but overall you were like, eh. I mean, a lot of guys on the team now are there, but yeah, I mean, right, I mean right. it starts at the top. I mean, Doug Peterson, for all our criticism, he's He's maintained a level head. Like he, he, they love him in that locker room. Yeah, I mean, and I think this team likes to try things different, uh, differently uh, at times. 
hey, Josh Adams, Mike Grove, not liking my line of questioning and immediately throws to him three times in this game. Uh, it's just, it's interesting to me. And I think Nick Foles said, you know, he wants to get a rolling. He wants to be in this uniform again. If he doesn't play, I'd be shocked. But <laughs> Nate Sudfeld, they block. love Nate Sudfeld. They, and people outside his, the organization love. that he had his uh, first career touchdown against the team that dumped him. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the revenge game. Yeah. But, uh, so we'll, we'll wrap it up with, we'll quick, we'll throw in early thoughts about this matchup. I'll say, um... I'm feeling pretty good about the Eagles. If you were to put a gun to my head right now and say make a prediction, I'd, I'd say the Eagles win. But that's right now. I think I think I'm going to change my mind because the, the Bears have the best defense probably in the NFL. They maybe have the best defensive player in the NFL, and Cleo Mack. Uh, ultimately, it will come down to what kind of player Mitchell Trubisky is in a tough playoff game, traveling to Chicago. It's going to be really cold there, um, and. This is going to be the toughest game the Eagles have played this season outside of that New Orleans Saints road game. And I I think they can win. I think they match up pretty fairly well with them. But I don't know, it's going to be a, it's going to be a tough one. I think they match up very very well. My thing is uh, you know, it's one of those things where I value coaching and experience and so that's why I take it is it, that's why I give the Eagles the edge. Um, I wrote, didn't have experience last year, right? But now they do. I know. I know. I'm just saying. So, but I mean, like, he's a similar similar coach. Yeah, I, I mean, it's true. He, he's it's a really true. Good coach too. He is a very yeah. good coach. But they, yeah, this is his first playoff game. You never know how that's going to go. That's right. Funny. No, it's more of the experience of Trubisky. Yeah. Like yeah, Nick yeah, Foles yeah. has been around. I mean, the quarterback. The, I mean, Nick Foles had been around last year, even if mm-hmm. maybe people weren't confident in him yet. Uh, but I would say the Bears have the defense to overcome a bad. Oh, for game. sure. I think Nick's like, gonna have a tough. That's game. why they, like they're they're like a Ravens Trent Dilfer as quarterback type team where they can survive an average quarterback because their defense is good enough. And I, I think the Eagles, as of late, like look, Bears have a better de- defense, a better secondary, a better better linebackers. Um, I think the Eagles' defensive front, the uh, defensive line is a little bit better, but their linebackers are significant. They're, they run a 3-4, um, so it's a little bit harder to grade them. Um, but I think the Eagles have the better offensive line. They have the better skill players, at least. Um, I, You know me. I, I'm a big Allen Bears, Robinson fan. And Bears running backs are really Tariq Cohen and Jordan Howard, that duo. Yeah, that's, that's where it's it, Especially Cohen. But what, but but what? So that's what's dangerous, right? Mm-hmm. So you saw the way the Eagles played the Redskins today, where they kept the ball out of the Redskins' hands, and they played really good defense. That's a pit that you can fall into against the Bears. They run the ball well. They don't make a lot of mistakes. They've got a really good defense, and you've got that home field advantage. I, I don't get so up for the cold games. Snow bothers me and cold rain bothers me. But I, a cold, like, wh- you know, whatever. You practice outside in Philly for a little bit and you're good. I think, uh, I don't know what the, the temperature is set to be out there. I'm not Probably gonna... cold, I'm assuming. <laughs> right, but I think somebody said in the press box it's not expected to snow. Oh, okay. Um, so then, you know, it's... But I'll probably be... I'm curious to see what sort of crowd comes out there, Philly-wise. Because if there's a... I mean, a last-second trip, Chicago's doable. Yeah, I mean, it is. I mean, we've we've been researching flights, and let me just tell you, you should book your I mean, your the flight times now. aren't great. If, you're, if you want the cheapest possible yeah. flight, you're going to be doing red-eyes. Yeah, I, I'm on pregnancy <laughs> watch, so I'm only going for 24 I mean, hours. We're, we're, we're uh, recording this at a red-eye hour, so <laughs> it's 1 o'clock. It's right part now. of our charm. <laughs> um, but yeah, so early thoughts... I like the Eagles' chances. There's something about this team that's very special. I think they have absolutely no shot against New Orleans, but I definitely think they can win this game. Um, if Nick Foles is healthy and he's playing well or well enough, I think this team can win. I, again, I wouldn't be shocked if if by some chance the defense shuts them down and this is like a 13-10 to 10 game. But the Nick, the, the Knicks, the the, <laughs> the, uh, the Eagles have my confidence for now. Let, let's do a, little, a real quick guess that line. What do you think the line is right now? I just pulled it up, the opening line. I would say the Bears are probably four and a half point favorites. Six point favorites right now. That's going to drop. I mean, people are going to start betting the Eagles pretty hard on that. So. Yeah, that's what you think. That's All right, we can wrap up on that. We'll we'll have some more for you this week. We're, we have a lot of stuff on NJ.com. Make sure to go check it out. Uh, thanks for listening, guys, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.